Welcome traders to today's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Um, I'd just like to do a quick audio check. If you can hear me loud and clear, can you type a Y in the chat box? And you should be able to see on your screens a tip mill, we want traders to succeed screen. So I can just get a Y in the chat box to confirm that you can hear me. Good stuff. Okay, let's, uh, before we get going, in terms of looking at uh, today's uh, analysis, first of all, we want to remind ourselves of the risks involved in trading, um, which are substantial. Um, also, that um, any of the views or opinions expressed uh, today are solely mine, and they don't represent uh, the organization or, or company of Tickmill in any way. I'm, uh, I'm an independent uh, market experts in residence for Tickmill. So just to give you a heads up of, of where I'm coming from, um, I've been trading for the past 15 years. Um, first couple of years were really um, meddling in the markets after I'd exited a consulting startup um, that I co-founded. I, um, I cashed in my, my stake uh, during a merger and um, had a bunch of time on my hands and some, some capital to play with. And I started exploring my passion for markets. I'd had a, a front row seat to the dot-com boom and bust, seen people lose and make a fortune in the markets overnight and, um, and started to, like I say, really meddle. Um, gambling is probably more appropriate for what I was doing in those early days. And um, I actually experienced a, a pretty significant um, six-figure loss which, um, which fortunately for me at that stage wasn't terminal, but it was, uh, it was a wake-up call, and I decided to, to really get serious about trading and to treat it as I had done with other commercial endeavors as, uh, as a business, first and foremost. So I sought out um, a mentor, someone who had, uh, who had basically demonstrated excellence in the field of trading and someone I could model their behavior. Uh, which is ultimately what I, I went on to do. I uh, worked with my mentor for um, 18 months, two years really, in uh, developing not just my technical game, but more importantly, my mental game. And so by the, uh, by the time I'd finished that process, I had a, a fully um, documented trade and business plan. Uh, I had an extensive back test and forward test. And so at the stage that I returned to the markets, I was, um, I was fully prepared and I actually um, started trading uh, what I consider to be professionally in 2008 and um, obviously fairly um, volatile markets not too dissimilar to what we've witnessed um, just recently in our in current market conditions um, and since then on a on an annual basis I've um, I've been profitable and um, and really that's how I, I focus in terms of my performance I, I'm not concerned about the the outcome of individual trades or even of a group of trades. What I'm focused on is, uh, is the next 100 trades and whether or not my edge can demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Um, so that's where I, 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 that's how I approach trading now. It's, uh, it's not, I don't live and die by the outcome of individual trades. Um, and since 2013, I have actually been running a managed account service, um, managing external investor capital it started out as friends and family and it's grown organically from there um, the results you can see on the screen are the um, the annual and monthly returns for um for my performance since 2013 um and really where i've got to now in my career is that and, and my approach to trading is that most of my um, trade execution work is basically done at the end of day i primarily focus on trading the, um, the daily time frames and so, um, so I have a bunch of time available during the day. I'm obviously monitoring markets, but I, I don't, uh, I don't make any, uh, or, or the, the majority, I would say, the vast majority in terms of, you know, 90% plus is end of day execution. There are times when I do um, trade on the uh, the intraday or, or lower time frames, but it's um, it's mainly end of day stuff. And so I have a bunch of time on my hands, and um, and obviously I have a quite a, an extensive experience in the markets and that has led me to be involved in some additional projects. One obviously is the um, uh, tick mill where I'm the uh, resident market expert. I provide daily market outlooks and um, chart of the day specifically interesting setups that I'm tracking in the market and you can uh, you can sign up to receive those into your inbox on a daily basis. Um, I'm also the head of trading and trader education for an emerging 
um, trading education firm called FX Career Swap, whereby we take um, retail trading talent, we develop it, we, uh, we underpin their learning with uh, 21 interactive modules, and then um, I share 10 of what I call uh, advanced strategies that, um, that have proven profitable for me over the past uh, 15 years. And we look to build up um, individual traders, and they then go on to manage the firm's capital at, um, at zero personal risk. And um, because capitalization is really one of the things that, that hampers the development of, of retail traders, you can have an excellent trading plan and excellent risk management, and, um, and you can go about executing your plan. But you know, it, when you're undercapitalized, your returns, you know, even if you're hitting 20, 30, 40, 50% a year, which are excellent risk adjusted returns. If you're only trading a thousand pound account, that uh, that isn't going to add up to a whole amount of, of financial gain, and so it makes it makes it difficult for traders really to to adhere to risk management strategies that allow the professionals to to perform and develop. Um, so what we do is we're we're trying to help traders overcome that capitalization hurdle, and once uh, once they've been through the education process, um, we underpin that with uh, with a funded account. So um, those are a couple of the different projects I'm involved in now, but first and foremost, I'm a trader and, um, and that's where my, my main focus is. So I want to just um, bring it back really to, to some of the charts that are, or, or some of the market dynamics and, and themes that I'm, I'm watching at the moment. Um, if you've been following my intraday, uh, if you've been following my tick mill releases, you'll note that I've been, um, I've been constructive once we had the panic low in place in the S&P 500 that I'd, um, that I'd started to get constructive on that in the near to, to medium term. And there were a bunch of indicators that were suggesting that, um, that we could see a, certainly a tradable low in place. Whether or not we've seen the low is obviously uh, subject for debate. And, and it's, you know, the, the, we will look in a minute at the technical setup that would suggest that we may have to, uh, to do some further testing on the downside. These are some of the supporting charts that I've been using to, to guide my, my view in the market. This is the VIX, the volatility index. And once we had that peak in place, similar to what we saw in uh, 2008, I, that's when I got the that's when I got the sense, and certainly the technical setup on the charts was suggesting that we could see um, some near-term upside in um, in the S&P 500. And what I'm ultimately looking for now is I'm looking to define some of the key areas on the charts because what I know from experience is that even in bear markets, and we were in a bear market, we're currently just on the on the verge of getting back into a bull market ironically on the, the S&P 500, but even in bear markets, we do see some, some pretty extreme and certainly tradable um, rallies. And you can see here, this is through the period of 2008, you know, we had a couple of 20% um, rallies and we've seen a, well, we've exceeded 20% now in this current rally. And so certainly now what I want to be thinking to myself is um, where are the next opportunities in terms of um, near-term trading opportunities. This is uh, a note from Goldman Sachs Prime Brokerage, whereby um, earlier this month, uh, you know, these the uh, CTAs uh, were, were basically selling into um, what was this this prior rally, obviously getting squeezed, and uh, that that selling or, or shorting has obviously taken, as it often does, taking the markets higher. So if we look at the S&P 500 now. Um, this is the uh, the S and P 500. So what we're what I'm looking at from a technical perspective is we've got uh, we've got this decline that we've witnessed through to the March 23rd low, and now there are a couple of key areas that I'm looking at on the way back up as what I refer to as decision points. And when I say decision points, what I mean is when the market tests these areas, I'm ultimately looking for price to inform me as to whether or not this decision point is significant in respect of being or, or being the cause for a potential reversal in the current move. So we've had the initial impulse leg off the low and the other tool that I use is the FIB extension tool to, um, to help uh, frame this data. So we've had that as our, our impulse move off the low. We then had a correction that completed here and so now I'm able to, to quickly see a couple of key areas that I want to, um, to pay attention to. The first one is the 50% retracement 
and the equality move. When I say equality, what I mean is this leg here that we're in, currently in moving to the upside will ultimately, as a minimum requirement, will be equal to the, the initial leg of correction of the lows. Okay, so we've got uh, impulse move, corrected pullback, and now we're we're trading up. And what I'm looking for is a minimum test of this 27.89 area with the quality um, confluence just above at 28.89. So it's 100 S&P points. Now, when I'm trading the S&P, I'm certainly not involved in trading um, these the, the intraday timeframes. I'm ultimately looking at the daily uh, timeframes. So risk adjusted obviously for volatility i can I'm, I'm more than comfortable with 100 pip rate uh, sorry 100 point range watching for potential reversal patterns in this area now what i'm immediately drawn to as i'm watching this price action develop is i'm always looking to or paying attention to prior phases of price action for similarity to emerge in um, in the current swing and what i can see here is um, if we just overlap this leg here all the way through to here we can see that we're starting to there's some similarity here in terms of this move so again we just have to pull things in here but we can see that there's some similarity we've tested into a double top here and now what i see is the potential for a pullback let's just draw this in so we could get a pullback into this area and what we've got to remember here is that we're, we're trading we're, we're about to head into a holiday weekend it's unlikely that traders are going to want to take too much risk into the weekend because what we've witnessed over um, prior weekends the first, last weekend was the first weekend we didn't really see it and i am um, i highlighted, highlighted that to my team that um you know we didn't see a gap down last week and so uh, that's that's suggesting there is some underlying strength in the market so what we could see here is a pullback before um, we get this next leg of of upside so we could get something like this maybe we test into the equality move from there and then we get a decision point now when i say again when i say decision point what i'm talking about then is a a, a signal a reversal signal and for me what i'm looking at are the daily charts um, and i have uh, Fine strategy. I use a, a near-term volume weighted average price to give me a signal in the markets. So I'm always looking for um, if I'm looking to be short the market, I will need to see a red candle. And what the red candle um, means to me is that price has closed below the near-term volume weighted average price. And that suggests a change in market behavior or a potential change in market behavior. Now, I'm not looking at every reversal that occurs every time a, a candle flips red or green, that isn't, isn't a buy or sell signal for, for me. It has to be in specific areas on the chart. And one of those are um, the volatility um, support and resistance patterns. So these are a 20 period look back and highlighting um, where we have uh, a statistical chance at least of price pausing and or um, potentially reversing. So in this instance, we're, I'm looking at the 27.90 to 28.80 area. We haven't quite come in there, but we've come close. We're testing what is the equivalent of the monthly VWAP, and we're seeing a little bit of a pullback here. So from a trading perspective, if I was going to, to look to do something on the short side at the moment in the S&P 500, what I would need to see would be a close today back below this VWAP. So ultimately what I'd be looking for is what's often referred to as an engulfing candle. So if we've got a close back below near-term volume waste average price, we've come within, a few, if we look at the high of this candle, the high was 27.73 and we were looking for 27.86 on the nose with a 50% pullback. So that's, as, that's, that's pretty close in terms of the trading opportunity. So if we did get a, a, a reversal, various reversal today obviously the market's going to be closed um, tomorrow for the Easter holidays but if we come in on um, Monday or, or um, Monday is bank holiday in uh, in the UK I don't know probably across Europe as well but um, I think the US is open on Monday so I'd be watching if we do get a, a reversal here then what we might be getting is the sense that this correction is either going to complete or it's going to become complex when I say complex, what I mean is that we can have more than um, more than three waves in the correction. We could have a five-wave correction. So what we could be setting up for 
is an equidistant pullback. So you can see a correction back into this 25, um, 33 area, which is just equal to the prior correction. So at this stage, in terms of suggesting a, a near-term change in the, in the, in the near-term trend, which is um, to the upside at the moment, that wouldn't um, suggest that anything meaningful because what we could see from there is, um, is simply set up for another bigger leg higher um, which would ultimately put us up into the next resistance zone. Now, if I go back to this chart, so if we if we overlay, just be I, I'm using this because it's clearer for you guys to see. But like I say, I'm looking at the daily chart for signals. So let's just bring this in here. So we could get this type of pullback, and then what we'd be looking for is the prior whole move up, which would be this. To replicate over here. Now, why is this area significant to me? Well, this area retains now it's the 78.6% retracement. Most corrections, the majority of corrections, note I don't say all corrections, I don't use definitive terms when talking about the markets. The markets are by their very nature ambiguous. What I have is a methodology for framing data which has a, a high probability outcome, or there is a higher probability of one thing happening over another, and that's all I'm looking to do. Obviously, as a trader, as well for probabilities. But if we see this type of pattern, then we'll be trading into the 78.6% retracement, and this will be the 161% um, extension of this initial leg versus um, the current swing low. So I can see there's, you know, there's clearly a, a map here in terms of uh, markets that could lead us up into um, into this. 31, 38, 31, 65. So that's giving us at the moment about probably about a 30, uh, 30 point window, which is which is clearly pretty uh, pretty tight. But let's just see if in terms of if we look at some channeling here. So we have the we have this channel in play. So if we don't if we don't if, if we don't roll over and take out yesterday's lows today on the close. Maybe we, we have a more shallow pullback that brings us um, back into these prior two tops here. So we get a retest of those as um, prior resistance, initial support, and we get another support hold here. Then again, that still sets up the potential for this, uh, for this further leg higher. And, um, and even at this stage, this would really probably be my line in the sand with respect to uh, with respect to a bearish decision point in the market, from here we could still get the setup that would give us um, the second leg of this of this move down. So I mean, we wouldn't we still wouldn't be out of the woods um, from a technical perspective. We could still get a, another leg lower, and I wouldn't in terms of that move. I wouldn't anticipate that it would be as, as sharp as this first move. They're, they're often not. What we like to see is more of a grind, steady grind lower, um, which would take us back down towards this 2000 area. So this is what I'm looking at in terms of the S&P 500. Uh, again, unless on the on the daily chart we're going to take out, uh, if we look back here, let's just draw in the line. So we've got a line in the sand. So on the daily, you know, on, the, on today's close, and that's we're going to take out 26.10, let's say. So, you know, that would be a 160-point uh, reversal, be meaningful reversal, certainly. Um, but unless we do that, then I would, uh, I'd still remain constructive on the futures. But if we did do that, then certainly what we'd have to consider is the potential um, that we could be starting the next leg lower, or certainly a test of lower levels. Um, the Logical place that we test next, we'll be back into the 2420 below there. We'd be looking at a retest of the lows. And if we fail to find support there, obviously we've got targets to the downsides. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the S&P 500. For me, it's the, you know, it's the major um, risk market gauge and um, it's the index that I, I trade when, when I'm looking to trade the indexes. So, that's the first chart I wanted to make you aware of today. And um, the second one, go back to the slides here, is the, the dollar index. Now, obviously, the dollar index is the, is the major um, counterparty to most foreign exchange trades. And so 
I always want to be cognizant of what's happening with the dollar index and what the potential moves might be because that's where you can get the setups for the um, for the really big swings in the market. And I, I believe um, we're at a, a significant inflection point with the dollar index and, um, and one that could have uh, you know a meaningful outcome. This is um, data going back to um, to 1975. And, um, and you can see that the dollar has tended to move in these big swings, um, broadly six or seven years to the upside and ten, uh, nine to 10 years to the downside, where um, we've exceeded the, the cycle on the upside. It kind of in line with the, the excess that we've seen in terms of the bull market in stocks. We've had the longest bull market past 11 years and the dollar has slightly exceeded the, the seven year move, but have another chart here that will um, give a better read. We have uh, actually a 16 year cycle in the dollar index. This is uh, highlighted by Goldman Sachs here. This is going back all the way to the 60s. So you can see we have a 16 year loop in terms of the dollar index. Meaningful swing highs tend to occur in and around the 16 year period. And um, the last one came in 2017. We still haven't exceeded the 2000. And 17 highs so um, you can see in this prior cycle around the dot-com boom we did once we put in the original high we did kind of trade a bit higher but then that, that meaningful dollar move to the downside occurred similar here um, back in the uh, early 80s similar type of move got the swing high and then exceeded it marginally before trading lower um, and so what we've got really that, that's potentially driving this move is, or that could drive this move, is the vast liquidity that's being supplied to the market um, by the Federal Reserve. So in order to combat the, um, the dire political um, circumstances surrounding the, the pandemic, um, the Fed have had to uh, unleash a significant amount of liquidity, far eclipsing what we've seen by other central banks. And that vast sum of US dollars is at some point likely, more, more likely than not, going to weigh on the dollar index. At the moment, it would appear there's about a 60 day lag in terms of the dollar index and, and the liquidity that's being pumped into the markets. Um, so we, we've, got, we've, got a, we've got some underlying um, flow in the market and, and, and positioning that suggests that we might be seeing a major turn in the dollar index. This is the later CFTC data, and we can see here that we're getting some divergence in terms of each time we're making, in, this is the white line represents price, oops, sorry, the white line represents price, and the orange line is the, um, the positioning flow as per the CFTC speculative futures positioning. And what we can see is that prices continue to make highs here, but um, we're making significant lower lows in terms of the actual support in the market for those highs. We had a similar circumstance occur in 2017. We had this, this peak, which, which was supported in the, in the futures market, then we tried to make another high, but the futures uh, and the positioning said uh, no. And then the ultimate top came here, and we can see we have that third divergence in terms of um, positioning flow, not supporting higher prices. And we can see we're in a similar situation here, and we're look like we've got the potential to put in a very meaningful double top here. And um, from a flow perspective, we are not seeing the um, the price support for dollar dollar market. Um, this chart is a seasonal chart. Here we have the 20 year um, seasonal average movement for the dollar index. And we note that, um, that April tends to see a, a high in the market. We can certainly retest those highs, but um, what we tend to see is a lower high um, in, the, in, these, in the summer months before seeing a real, a real drop away in terms, of, uh, in terms of the dollar index. So, that's some of the, the background data. If we move to the charts now, um, this is the monthly charts of the, of the dollar index that I've, I've shared before. Now, we, we tested this trend line going back for, it's a 20 year trend line. We, we chopped up above it last month and rapidly closed back down below it. Um, we're now potentially seeing, uh, a, well, well, obviously we've got a few weeks to go um, in terms of this month, but a second close below that trend line would suggest that, um, that the, bull, the dollar bulls are certainly running out of steam. 
Um, we can actually take a look at it here. You can see the, let me just move this. This is the, the bigger, uh, this is goes back to that, uh, that 85 high that I showed you on the other charts. Now, if we do get a close above, um, for me, it would be close above this 104 area. If we close above 104, then using the same analytics that I've, I've used in terms of the S&P 500, except obviously we're on a monthly chart here, we would have a confluent target back up towards 120 in the dollar. So, although you know, although I, I'm certainly cognizant of the um, the downside risks to the dollar, at the end of the day, as I as I say to all the guys I work with, you know, price is the final arbiter for me, and I follow what price does. I want to be aware of all the dynamics that are in play, but ultimately it's price that is going to lead things. So, like I say, if we do see a close above this prior high here, so we have 103.82. Close above there would negate this idea of a double top, would take out the trend line, and then the next upside objective would be this A, B, C, D move, and that would take us back in to a retest or, or to test the 50% retracement of the decline from 1985 all the way through to February 2008. Okay, so want to be uh, want to be mindful of of that potential setup as well. So whilst I, in the near term, I'm certainly looking for potentially um, bearish dollar setups. I'm also cognizant I've got some lines in the sand with respect to where that uh, that thesis will run out of steam for me. And um, and then we'd have to be looking at upside targets and certainly repositioning in terms of my my trading and uh, and what I'm looking for in, uh, in the market. So that's, it's important as traders that when we're doing our analysis, we don't come to the market with bias. We're assessing from a point of balance, from a point of, uh, from, of a no bias, just simply looking at the technical patterns that are, that are setting up. And so at the moment, whilst this trend line holds the technical pattern and the seasonality and the flow in the market would suggest that we could see downside in the dollar. But if for whatever reason, let's say we have a, another, um, you know, a, a downturn in terms of the optimism with respect to um, dealing with the global pandemic, then we could see another rush into dollars. And if we do start to, to drive meaningfully higher, then um, we've got some upside targets that we'll be um, looking at. But like I say, at the moment for me, I'm, uh, I'm looking for, for bearish setups in the dollar. And, um, and what I've got are a couple that I'm watching at the moment. I've I'm looking for a, a break of the of this uh, outside reversal candle. We had a bearish inside day yesterday. Downside break here through that weekly pivot um, for me is going to be a uh, short position. And I have a, um, a setup here that if we get that move, I'd be looking for a move down to the 94 area. So getting short um, below the lows of that candle. So 9680. Um, Looking at shorts, 96.80, I'll be putting a stop at this just above 97.50 area, so risking about 70 pips to, to make about 250 there in terms of the, the setup I've been looking for. So what I've been looking for would be this type of move. Could extend, could certainly retest the lows, but initially this will be my objective. Uh, an equidistant swing, so just to highlight that for you here. So looking for the break there stop just above those prior highs and you can see there you know, from a risk reward perspective you're getting to four times your risk which are, these are the type of situations asymmetric risk reward that we're looking for as traders we have a similar scenario in the euro dollar um, come into potentially a, an inverse head and shoulders pattern here and um, what i've been looking for this will be a long position obviously it trades inverse to the uh, to the um swissy so we can see a break of this outside reversal candle. And then my target is going to be the A, B, C, D objective. So again, I'm looking for a move up into this area. You get a 3.69 risk reward ratio. Now, if this dollar starts to really roll over and we start to see a, you know, a, a significant shift in terms of market sentiment, then um, we could certainly retest highs and then we've got confluence back up here at 115. So, you know, I want to be cognizant of the bigger opportunities, but my initial objectives and my risk reward ratios all stack up there for me. So it, uh, it all makes sense in terms of risk reward. And that's what I'm focused on. And that's what I, I tell the guys I work with um, in terms of my, my trading teams is that, 
you know, no matter how good the setup is, the risk reward has to work and it has to be a realistic risk reward. And so what I'm always what I'm doing in terms of identifying profit targets is I'm just using prior swings. So I'm not I'm not getting in here and thinking, right, the euro is going up to 180. It could do, but that you know, the the probabilities of that happening in the near term are, are pretty slim. So what I'm doing is setting realistic objectives in terms of price swings for my targets. So that's what I've got there in the euro. Um, I was also looking at some other, you can see we've got a similar story here in, um, in the uh, Singapore dollar, similar setup that takes back in these for our highs. I'd had a couple of great trades in the Singapore dollar and then uh, not such a great one. I, I tried to get long here off this uh, this bullish outside candle. Looked like it was starting to work, but then um, as we came into this week, it, it rolled over and I, I got stopped out on that one. But um, had a couple of great trades, was long down here, back into this double top, and I shorted back down into these lows. Um, those are trades I shared uh, with the team in real time. And you can also follow me on TradingView. I'll, I'll post the link for, for that account. I try and share as much as possible there, but it's not always uh, feasible in terms of the time to get things posted. But um, Singapore dollar setting up. We've got the um, loonie now. Obviously, the loonie, what you, you've got a, a slight fly in the ointment in terms of the loonie setup, which is the OPEC meeting that's uh, due today and the, uh, the back and forth with respect to cuts, etc. So the price action is not likely to be as clean, um, but you've got a similar type of setup. Um, the Aussie is starting to break out now. Um, if we can see closes, uh, we've got to close above this prior resistance. You can see targets now in the Aussie up to 66, which would be the ABCD pattern. If we bring in the fib retracement tool from the prior highs into the lows, there we go. We've got the confluence there at 78.6. So once we're through 62.80 um, in this in this Australian dollar, for those who trade intraday or looking at short term setups, then there are valid targets now developing in the um, in the Australian dollar for a move up into this area. And from there, we'll see another decision point in terms of the markets. Um, but certainly there is opportunity uh, on the upside in, um, in the Australian dollar. Uh, what else am I looking at? I think realistically, guys, that's, um, that's all that's on, on the cards for me at the moment. So I'm, I'm looking really at the um, the euro in terms of the daily setups, I'm looking at the euro, I'm looking at the Swissy, and um, if we look at the, the dollar index, you can see we've got a similar pattern in terms of the dollar index. This is the, um, the Dow Jones dollar index, it's made up of um, four other pairs. Um, it's the, on an equal weighted basis, it's with the Australian dollar, the um, sterling, uh, the uh, euro, and the yen. And you can see we're seeing a similar type of pattern emerges those uh, major dollar crosses that we've just looked at. So we have an A, B, C, D um, scenario. So looking for this to ultimately break down. So whilst we hold this area, this uh, 127 as resistance, then we can look for a move to 122.60 on the downside. And then again, that's another decision point for the market because once that correction, you know, if this is just a correction, or certainly then we could see another surge higher to, to take out these prior highs or this could be the start of a more meaningful decline to the downside so swissy and the euro are on the are on the book i'm watching obviously the, the s p 500 we'll see where uh, where that's going to close out today just be cognizant that we are heading into a holiday weekend and it's likely people will uh, look to cover positions late in the day so we might see some end of day volatility there Okay, that's, uh, that just about wraps it up from me at the moment, guys. Are there any questions? Would anyone like me to look at a chart that I haven't covered or, um, or any other uh, questions with respect to the market? Uh, happy to, to answer any of those now. You can type them in the chat box. <coughs> If you just type in no in the chat box so that I can uh, see everyone's uh, everyone's satisfied with uh, what we've been talking about and understands what I'm looking at. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks very much, guys, for taking the time to, to tune in. Enjoy as best you can the holiday weekend, and I'll be back with you again um, next Thursday. In the interim, if you want, uh, if you want to find um, or follow. 
any of the, the trading ideas that I post, um, you can do that uh, through my the TradingView account. I'm trying to find, let's see here. So it's um, TradingView is FX Career Swap. And you can uh, you can follow my ideas there uh, during the week. If not, I'll uh, I'll catch up with you guys next Thursday. So uh, take care and, uh, and have a great weekend.